Washington's Clear Thinking Headquarters. The Morning Majority, 5 to 9 on 630 WMAL. 838 WMAL, Morning Majority, Brian Neiman, Mary Catherine Ham, Brian Wilson in the house this morning. We're joined now by Niall Gardner, director of the Margaret Thatcher Center for Freedom at the Heritage Foundation, who's written a piece called President Obama's Top Ten Insults Against Britain, the 2011 edition. Good morning, Niall. Yes, good morning. Could you uh, could you just give us the uh, the quick rundown of the uh, top ten insults against Britain from uh, this administration? Yes, well, actually, originally I put out a piece uh, last year entitled uh, Barack Obama's Top Ten Insults Against Britain. Uh, there have been so many insults since then, I had to update <laughs> it and release a 2011 edition. And no doubt there'll be a 2012 edition uh, a few months from now. But um, I kicked off, actually, with... Uh, uh, the Obama administration siding with Argentina uh, over the Falklands. Mm. Uh, if you recall, Hillary Clinton backed Argentina's call for UN-brokered negotiations over the sovereignty of the Falkland Islands. Uh, Britain fought a major war against Argentina yeah. in 1982 right. after Argentina invaded the, uh, the, the islands. This was seen as a huge insult to Britain, uh, the U.S. administration basically siding with uh, Britain's old enemy. Um, I also pointed out that uh, very recently, uh, Barack Obama described uh, France, uh, not Britain, as America's uh, strongest ally in a press conference with uh, Nicolas uh, Sarkozy. And I don't know exactly what the French have done to deserve this. I mean, after all, the French have <laughs> knifed the United States uh, on numerous occasions, including the war in, in Iraq. So uh, yet another example of uh, a rather ridiculous um, Obama foreign policy. And, and the, list, uh, the list goes on uh, from Obama's uh, sort of relentless, merciless bashing of uh, uh, Britain's largest company, BP, last year, mm. uh, through to betraying uh, uh, Britain in order to appease uh, the Russians over the New START Treaty. So uh, there's a very, very long list. It could easily have been a, a top 20 uh, list, frankly. And uh, I'm, I'm in no doubt that uh, we're, we're going to see uh, many more insults uh, in the coming uh, in the coming months. Now I think you're I think you're missing the nuance of the greatest ally bit, which is that uh, Barack Obama has first and second best friends, um, <laughs> <laughs> and that's the that's the significance of that. But there, there's a bunch, like you said, there's a bunch of this stuff left over from last time, too. When uh, Gordon Brown came to visit, and we had the the lovely DVD yeah, and the iPod <laughs> exchange. Oh yes, yeah, I, exactly. And you know, I, one of the first things that. Uh, President Obama did after taking office uh, was uh, to uh, to remove a bust of Winston Churchill from the Oval Office, an extremely uh, smart move, I think, for the for the new administration. Uh, and then, you know, the DVD gate uh, scandal followed uh, when Gordon Brown, the then Prime Minister, was utterly humiliated on his visit to the White House. He was sent off packing with uh, a set of 25 uh, DVDs, including. Uh, the Wizard of Oz Toy Story, uh, for example. Uh, great and movies, the DVDs though. couldn't even be played in, in Britain, so uh, not exactly <laughs> yeah, they didn't uh, even winning the PAL public versions. diplomacy from the White House. All right, but uh, how do the British people um, like Barack Obama? In, in Ireland, at least, he got a, he got a very warm reception. Well, what do the people of Britain feel about him? Yeah, I think, um, you know, Obama's uh, image in Britain is, is very is very mixed and and i think that i mean if you look at the british press over the course of the last uh year or so there has been sort of relentless uh negative uh uh reporting on on barack obama uh, not least because he's seen as the most anti-british uh president of modern times um but uh, we, we also of course saw large crowds of, of people turning out to see uh, barack obama in london this week uh, his visit to to the uk uh, was, was, I think, a, a bit more sort of polished and uh, successful than some of his earlier overseas uh, tours. He, he gave a speech yesterday uh, in Westminster Hall to uh, both the House of Commons and the House of Lords, uh, which was generally well received. He did, though, have a, a disastrous uh, press conference yesterday morning with uh, David Cameron, the British Prime Minister, where uh, President Obama was clearly outclassed. And when he was asked a question on the budget deficit, he had really no uh, no idea how to answer the question. Uh, on Libya, uh, he did even worse. And uh, David Cameron actually had to 
explain exactly what the Obama administration was doing on, on Libya, because certainly uh, Barack Obama had no idea himself <laughs> what was going on. Niall, i got a question for you. Uh, many Americans are scratching their heads about the president's signing of that guest yeah. book and saying that he visited on May, what was it? 08. 08, 2008. What is the discussion about that there in the U.K.? Yeah, there's been a fair amount of interest in that, and everyone's wondering why, you know, why on earth he put 2008 and not uh, 2011. Obviously, 2008 was a very good year for uh, President Obama. <laughs> right. Uh, 20, you know, uh, more recently, I, I think that, that Obama's been, you know, sort of uh, declining significantly in the polls, so and perhaps that's why he didn't want to put 2011 down. Um, but, you know, I, I would say that if this was George W. Bush who had put down 2008 instead of 2011, he would have been flayed alive, I think, yes. by, the, yes. uh, by, by the, the U.S. media, no doubt the international media as well. But because it's President Obama, he's given a, a sort of a free pass. And there was also, of course, the incident of his toast to the Queen, yeah. which was um, you know, straight out of a sort of Monty Python film, really. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and, and again, I mean, I think that Obama you know, didn't, didn't attract too much criticism over that. If it was George W. Bush... Uh, he would have been hung, drawn, and courted by by uh, you know the court of international opinion. So I think a, a double standard clearly uh, applies here. Yeah, I mean, if you have any doubt about that, remember when George W. Bush tr opened the wrong door and the door right. wouldn't open, and and that went on and is still going on. People still play that piece of tape as an example. It really is not. There is there is a double standard at play here. Do the tab oh, do, do the tabloids of the back pages ever go after Barack Obama in the UK? Yeah, I think actually, you know, the interesting thing is that you see, uh, in my opinion, far more objective reporting of President Obama's record than you do in the United States. I, I do think overall the uh, the print media in America is very deferential towards President Obama, whereas the the British uh, print media uh, is deferential to no one. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, from the U.S. president to the British the British Prime Minister, and you, you see far more uh, scathing reporting. I think of uh, the president's job performance uh, in the UK than you do in, in the United States. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, good to have you on the show. Thanks for coming on. Hope to talk to you soon. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Now, Gardner, director of the Margaret Thatcher Center for Freedom at the Heritage Foundation.